Well, hello everybody once again, and thank you so much for joining me for our Bible study here on Life Church Online. On Wednesdays, we've been going through this journey of studying a classic passage of Scripture found in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 17. It's all about the armor of God, and today is our final part of this particular study. And now we're going to deal with an idea, an encouragement, uh, a command from God that is closely associated with this spiritual armor that we're talking about. And the next piece of the armor that we're talking about actually isn't officially a piece of the armor, but it's just as critically as important as the armor itself. And what we're going to look at today is prayer. Prayer is an important part of our day-to-day -day lives, and it's interesting how the Apostle Paul mentions the critical uh, element of prayer in direct association with the armor of God. Now, we often don't really think of, of prayer associated with the armor, but it's actually one of the most vital parts. Now, the armor of God is comprehensive, and in this series we've spent time examining its purpose and its application to our lives, uh, and it's just an absolute essential, as we've said each week of this study, uh, we need the armor of God so that we can survive and win the spiritual battles that you and I fight every single day. But it's interesting, right on the heels of the description of this armor of God, Paul adds this in verses 18 and 19 of Ephesians 6. He says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests, with this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Now again, it's significant that this challenge to pray is directly connected to the spiritual armor. Now, one Bible commentator said this, no matter how complete the armor, no matter how skilled we may be in the science of war, no matter how courageous we may be, we may be certain that without prayer, we'll be defeated. God alone can give us the victory. And when the Christian soldier goes forth armed completely for the spiritual conflict, if he looks to God with prayer, he may be sure of triumph. I mean, that's a powerful quote from one Bible commentator. commentator. And um, once we equip ourselves with God's armor, we must also be determined to keep a steady line of connection with him, right? So he is our commander. He's the commander of his spiritual army. He, he is our, our commander in chief. And so he alone how, knows how that we're going to win the victory in the challenges that we face every day. So, the challenging part of this encouragement to pray is this. How do I pray on all occasions as uh, Paul challenges us? Now, some translations say uh, that we should pray continually. Now, Luke 18, 1 through 8, Jesus said it this way. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Now, Jesus said this in the context of a parable meant to teach that men ought always to pray and not lose heart. So he was talking about perseverance in prayer. And, you know, you know, is God going to find faith on the earth? Are, gonna still, are there still going to be people who are persistent in prayer? So this is a good starting point for understanding what that means to pray always. Now, in her quest for justice, the widow never gave up, seeking help from the unjust judge. She persisted. In our quest for victory in our spiritual battles, we must never give up seeking help from Almighty God. So the command to pray is somewhat talking about this idea of a continuous, ongoing dialogue with God throughout every single day. But it doesn't necessarily mean praying every second of every day. Rather, is talking about this development of our connection with God, uh, a connection that's maintained through regular and persistent prayer. 
you know, Bible study, living a godly life, all these things working together. And this is what allows us to, to come before God in prayer in times of our, our, our of distress and in times of personal need. So what role does the Holy Spirit play in a Christian's prayers? Romans 8, 26 and 27 says in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the, minds of the, knows the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Now, this is so encouraging because since we don't always know how to pray like we should pray or what to even pray for, we have this promise that the Holy Spirit who lives in us is going to lead us and guide us when it comes to prayer. In fact, Paul says that the Spirit actually will make intercession for us. This means that although we may not even really know what to pray or how to pray, you know, what we should even be praying for in certain situations, God knows our hearts because he lives on the inside of us as, as followers of Jesus. So no matter how clumsy our prayers are sometimes and not quite sure how to put things into words and or even how to present our requests, even no matter how jumbled or confusing our prayers are, God will always know what we're trying to say, right? He knows our hearts. He does this through his Holy Spirit working in us, and he has intimate knowledge of our hearts and our minds, and he understands us, and he's always going to work things out for our good and for his glory. The key is to persistently come to him, to develop this habit of prayer. You know, we started out uh, at Life Church, uh, starting out the year with these little armbands just to remind us to pray first, right? So as we're talking about the armor of God, you know, we're talking about this priority of prayer. And those of you who have the little wristbands just as a little reminder on a daily basis, uh, this is really what we're talking about uh, as a connection to our spiritual armor. Now, Ephesians 6 also tells us uh, who or what we should be praying about. And what has become, what's known, you know, we've all come to know as the Lord's Prayer, Jesus lays out for us a framework for prayer. In Matthew 6, 9 through 13, Jesus said, This is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. So again, Jesus was presenting a model for prayer. This wasn't meant to be an inflexible outline that we have to follow every single time that we pray. And it's definitely not just a prayer we're supposed to recite over and over again. But what it really is is an excellent outline a really great checklist of things that we do need to take the time to pray about as we pray. So we should be praying on a regular basis for, among other things, God's will to be done, for our needs to be taken care of, for the forgiveness of our sins and, and deliverance from the attacks of the enemy. Then in Matthew 7, 7 and 8, Jesus said this, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, it will be opened. Wow, what an amazing promise. Then in Luke 21, 36, he said this, Watch therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. So we see here that not only are we praying for others, but it's also important to pray for ourselves. You know, our lives are filled with uh, reminders. I don't know about you, but uh, I daily deal with reminders that, man, I just can't make it on my own. Man, I need God and His Spirit at work in my life every single day. So it's important that we regularly ask God uh, for the help that we so desperately need every day. Now, God stands ready 
to give us the strength, the wisdom, the courage that we need to stand against our spiritual enemy. But he wants us to first come to him and to ask him for his help. And again, just to go back to Ephesians 6, 18 through 20, it says, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying uh, for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. I think it's awesome that Paul here is asking for prayers for himself here. And can I just remind you that church leaders are just as human as you are. They too are subject to just exhaustion and sickness and heartache and discouragement. Spiritual leaders uh, will deal at times and, and will at times fall short of the high mark that God has, has set for all of us. Sometimes spiritual leaders will face unique and difficult trials that may be around challenging decisions in, in God's kingdom work. So Paul was particularly concerned that God would give him the courage, opportunities and clarity and boldness to preach God's truth, even at the risk of suffering or death. Now, those of you who are part of the Life Church family, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate your prayers for me and my family. I just want to echo Paul's encouragement there. Uh, we just pray that you'd pray for not only our family, but for all of the leaders here of our church at Life Church, our staff, the pastors here. But here's what's great. We should not just, you know, keep our leaders in prayer, but we should remember all of his people. The fact is we're all in this battle together. And prayer is one of the most effective ways that we can support each other, care for each other, and fulfill the great commission that God has given us. In fact, if you're watching right now, I just want to invite you to go to the chat section there of this video. And if you have a specific prayer request, if there's something specific we can pray for you about, the people who are watching this video, we will read through those comments and take a moment just to pray one for another. Just let us know how we can pray for you. But as we close, let me just pray for all of us, okay? Father, we just thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for this wonderful encouragement we've received over these past eight or nine weeks to armor up, Lord, to walk in the spiritual armor that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, that we have every weapon and every form of defense that we'll ever need to be victorious in our spiritual battles. And Lord, I just want to pray for my friends. And Lord, we come to you because you've made it clear that prayer is the glue that holds that armor together. Prayer is our compass. It's our light. It's our lamp. It's what guides us throughout every battle. And so, Lord, we just want to tell you that we need you today. God, we need your wisdom. We need you to show us what to do, where to go, and how to do it. So, Lord, we're trusting in your direction and your divine guidance in our lives. Thank you for wisdom and for strength. Thank you for endurance to keep on keeping on for Jesus. So I pray your blessing, Lord, over each of my friends who are watching today. And Lord, as some type out some prayer requests that we can be praying about, I pray that, God, even as they type it out, God, they would just, just sense your presence and your power in their lives in that situation. We just thank you, Lord, for your goodness in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you guys. I love you. Uh, just to let you know, those of you who are part of the Life Church family, we have a few more weeks left of our uh, life group, uh, small group uh, semester. Uh, many of the groups are meeting on Wednesday night, but there are groups that are meeting throughout the week. But when the semester's over here in a couple of weeks, I just want to let you know we're going to go back to live in-person adult Bible studies on Wednesday nights. So join us on Sunday mornings. You'll hear all the details. We'll give you all the announcements on that. Watch social media here. Uh, we'll be letting you know the topic of our study on Wednesday nights as we relaunch. But hope to see you then. God bless you. See you this Sunday.